Hey there, folks. My name is Dan Goodman. And what we're attempting to do here is kind of extract key pieces of information from our CompTIA Network Plus course, which focuses on the N10007 exam. So I'm just going to call these tidbits because it's kind of a fitting name if you think about it. So this first tidbit if you will, is going to focus on network models. Now, the reason that I chose this one is because the network models are kind of that underlying theme throughout everything else we talk about in the Network Plus course. So we really want to focus on describing the functions of the OSI model layers, and then eventually we'll get to the TCP IP model layers. Now, we have these network models to help us decompose compartmentalize and organize what is happening on our networks. It's kind of like eating a steak, right? You don't just shove the whole thing in your mouth, you slice and dice it into smaller pieces and you chew it one bite at a time. These models consist of layers and the layers serve two functions depending upon how the model is being used. So let's say you're using the OSI model to determine how one system talks to another you would think of the layers as kind of a step-by-step -step breakdown of that communication. Step one, two, three, four, etc. If you're using the model to classify a device or a protocol, you almost want to think of the layers like a label or like a box. This device goes into this box because it does those things. This protocol goes into that box because that protocol does those things. It really just organizes those items, kind of defines what their roles are, if you will. The two network models that are focused on in the Network Plus course are the OSI model and the TCP IP model. And I know what you're thinking. Why do we need two of them, right? There's enough stuff we got to remember. Why do we need two network models? It's kind of like VHS versus beta, Blu-ray versus HD DVD, Target versus Walmart. Some vendors, some government entities preferred OSI, others preferred TCP IP. They're both ultimately talking about the same thing, but nowadays the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand. That's a different topic for another day. But anyways, the OSI model is where we're going to start because the TCP IP model is considered to be a condensed version of the OSI model. So if you understand OSI first, it hopefully makes understanding TCP IP a little bit easier. The first goal of the OSI model is to identify both the hardware and software components used in networking. So that means you're talking about devices, ports, and protocols. Once these components are identified, they get organized into the discrete layers. Now, each layer technically exists on its own, but it can feed information into layers above it or below it if need be. Now, when you're talking about going down the OSI model, this is essentially the equivalent of sending a piece of data from one system to another. You would start at the top of the model, which is layer seven, and go down the layers. This is officially called encapsulation with an E, encapsulation. When you are talking about going up the OSI model, this would be the equivalent of receiving a piece of data as opposed to sending it. You start at the bottom of the model, which is layer one, and go up the layers. This is officially called de-encapsulation, or depending upon which book you read, decapsulation. It's both talking about the same thing. Now, both are grammatically correct in that regard. First, you want to remember the layers by using an anagram or an acronym or an anonym, if you will. If you're talking about going from layer seven to layer one, and you've probably heard this in other places before, all people seem to need data processing. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Application, presentation, session, transport, data link, and physical. If you're talking about going from layer one to layer seven, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Physical data link network, transport session, presentation, and application. Trust me, you'll remember those two forever because it's been, I don't want to say how long it's been, and I still remember what those <laughs> acronyms are. Now, before we break down what each layer does, you want to use this as an analogy, kind of baking a cake, if you will. Now, when you first start out, you have individual ingredients, eggs, milk, flour, etc. As you start combining those ingredients together, they become something else. Eggs plus milk and flour becomes batter. Uh, milk plus butter plus sugar becomes frosting. 
each layer in the model adds something that makes the data become something else. The official term for this is protocol data unit or PDU. Each layer except the physical one is going to add or remove information to the header for the original data. This is that encapsulation or de-encapsulation I mentioned a second ago. Encapsulation is going to add the header. De-encapsulation is going to remove the header. The headers are going to be added or removed because the layer either needs that information or no longer needs that information. It's kind of like getting a package ready for shipping versus receiving a package. If you're shipping a package, you need the item, the bubble wrap, the box, the label, the shipping, etc. To receive a package, you toss all that stuff aside and you just need the item. Now as far as what each layer goes into, that's going to be a topic for another day because there's seven of them and we do want to make sure that we give each layer its appropriate attention. So we'll go ahead and sign up here for now. Hopefully you've got a good idea of what network models are, why we need network models. We're going to start getting into what each layer in the OSI model does here. But we'll save that for another day. I'll talk to you all soon.